The Mesozoic Era began 252.2 million years ago and ended 66 million years ago at the dawn of the Cenozoic Era. During the Mesozoic, life diversified rapidly and giant reptiles, dinosaurs and other monstrous beasts roamed the Earth. It was divided into the Triassic, the Jurassic and the Cretaceous periods. The Triassic period that spanned from 252 million to 200 million years ago saw the rise of reptiles and the first dinosaurs. During this time, the first pterosaurs sailed through the skies and the first ichthyosaurs and plesiosaurs swam in the oceans. The lineage of many modern-day reptiles began in the Triassic period, including crocodiles, lizards and turtles. In this video, we're going to take you on a fascinating trip to a time when dinosaurs began to rise and the world was undergoing profound transformations. Aoraptor Aoraptor is one of the earliest known dinosaurs and members of the sauropod family. It lived approximately 231 to 228 million years ago in western Gondwana, in the region that is now northwestern Argentina. The type and only species, Aoraptor lunensis, was first described in 1993 and is known from an almost complete and well-preserved skeleton and several fragmentary ones. Aoraptor was considerably smaller than most of the later dinosaurs. It grew to an average of about 3 feet, 1 meter in length, and weighed about 22 pounds or 10 kilograms. Standing and walking on its two back legs, Aoraptor had short arms. It had hands with three long clawed fingers at the end of each arm. Aoraptor had different types of razor-sharp teeth. Its top teeth were jagged like a saw and curved like those of other meat-eating dinosaurs, while the bottom teeth were similar to those of the plant-eating dinosaurs. This indicates that Aoraptor was most likely an omnivore. Its relatively long hind limbs suggest that it was well adapted to pursue prey and maintain a rapid pace, and the shorter forelimbs might have served a more specialized role in catching or manipulating food items. Aoraptor may have displayed limited social behaviors, potentially forming small groups or herds. These dinosaurs formed groups for hunting purposes, likely to take down larger prey. Fossil evidence of nesting sites and parental care behaviors is more commonly found in later dinosaur species, but it is plausible that the Aoraptor exhibited some form of parental care. Longisquama Longisquama insignis is a fascinating and enigmatic fossil reptile species that lived during the late Triassic period, approximately 220 million years ago. It was a small reptile with a length of about 20 centimeters or 7.9 inches with a slender and elongated body. Longisquama is known for its long feather-like appendages that extend from its back. The nature of the feather-like structures on Longisquama has been the subject of debate among paleontologists. Some scientists have suggested that these structures are not true feathers, but rather elongated scales or a unique evolutionary adaption. There is no evidence that they would have been suitable as flying structures. There doesn't seem to be evidence that they were used like synapsid sails for cooling either. Display is the best idea we have at this point. Fossils for Longisquama have been discovered in the Karatau Formation in southern Kazakhstan. Longisquama was probably an insectivore, eating the variety of different insects that were present in its environment. Sharovimpteryx from the mid-Triassic of Kyrgyzstan had the oddest wings of any fossil reptile stuck to its hind limbs. This unique delta-winged creature glided effortlessly between the trees of its forest home. Sharovipteryx was a relatively small reptile with a length of about 25 to 30 centimeters, 10 to 12 inches. The skeleton is preserved in dorsal view and largely complete, with the bones still articulated and impressions of some of the integument. 
but part of the pectoral girdle is missing and part is still encased in stone. One of the most striking features of Sharaviptorix is its extremely elongated hind limbs, which are much longer than its forelimbs. This adaption is thought to have allowed it to generate lift and glide through the air. The tail could have been bent up and down to create drag, slowing down its movements from tree to tree. The dietary preferences of Sharaviptorix remain uncertain, but it was likely an insectivore, preying on small arthropods. Interestingly, Sharaviptorix is classified as a Protorosaur, a group of Triassic weirdos that are probably more closely related to archosaurs than anything else. This includes animals like the long-necked Tanistrophius and the reptile monkeys like Trypanosaurus. Coelophysis was a small, compact dinosaur that lived about 210 million years ago. It was a quick and agile hunter that had hollow bones and a hole-ridden skull, which helped to reduce its weight and increase its speed. Coelophysis is known from a number of complete fossil skeletons of the species Coelophysis bowery. This lightly built dinosaur measured up to 3 meters, 9.8 feet long, and was more than a meter tall at the hips. Gregory Scott Paul estimated the weight of the gracile form at 15 kilograms, 33 pounds, and the weight of the robust form at 20 kilograms, 44 pounds. Coelophysis had a long and narrow head, approximately 270 millimeters, 0.9 feet, with large, forward-facing eyes that afforded its stereoscopic vision and, as a result, excellent depth perception. Coelophysis likely reached sexual maturity between the second and third year of life and reached its full size, just above 10 feet in length, by its eighth year. Coelophysis may have had a simple air sac system, a precursor to the more complex respiratory systems found in modern birds. These creatures are thought to have preyed on animals that were smaller by size than it was. However, Coelophysis may have hunted large prey in considerably larger packs, though there is no concrete evidence as yet in support of this defensive pack behavior. Some fossils have been found with other small Coelophysis bones inside, and at first it was thought that Coelophysis might have given birth to live young. It is now believed, however, that it was probably a cannibal that occasionally devoured its own young. Eudemorphodon This smallish reptile hopped around the coastlines of Europe a whopping 210 million years ago, during the late Triassic period. Eudemorphodon had the wing structure, short forelimbs embedded in an extended flap of skin, characteristic of all pterosaurs, as well as a diamond-shaped appendage on the end of its tail that probably helped it to steer or to adjust its course in mid-air. Eudemorphodon was a small pterosaur, being 1 meter or 3.3 feet in length and weighing no more than 10 kilograms, 22 pounds. Its fourth finger had a very large size and attached to the membrane making up the wing. It also possessed a large number of these teeth, a total of 110 of them densely packed into a jaw only 6 centimeters or 2.4 inches long. The morphology of the teeth are suggestive of a piscivorous diet, which has been confirmed by preserved stomach contents containing the remains of fish. Like many pterosaurs, it is believed to have been a relatively solitary animal, although some individuals may have engaged in group activities, such as nesting or foraging. Lystrosaurus One of the greatest survivors in all of Earth's history was a humble creature named Lystrosaurus. It was a dog-sized animal whose peculiar lineage evolved about 270 million years ago and looked like a cross between a pig and a lizard. Lystrosaurus was a decinodont therapsid between 0.6 to 2.5 meters, 2 to 8 feet long, with an average of about 0.9 meters, 3 feet, 
depending upon the species, and weighed about 90 kilograms, 200 pounds. Lystrosaurus was a herbivore. The animal did not have teeth in the usual sense. Instead, it had two tusks that projected downwards from the maxilla for digging up the roots of plants. Apart from this, Lystrosaurus had horny beaks for shearing and snipping off vegetation above ground and used a thorny second palate in their mouth to ground the vegetation. Lystrosaurus belonged to a group of therapsids known as decinodonts. This group includes some of the closest relatives to mammals within the synapsid lineage, making Lystrosaurus of particular interest to researchers studying the early evolution of mammal-like reptiles. The Permian extinction event wiped out almost 90% of all life on Earth, but not Lystrosaurus. They tunneled underground to deal with the disaster. The shape of Lystrosaurus's skull suggests it was a burrower, while its barrel chest may have held lungs capable of pulling in plenty of oxygen, even in dusty air full of contaminants. Arizonasaurus Arizonasaurus is an extinct genus of archosauriform reptile that lived during the late Triassic period around 220 to 210 billion years ago. They belong to the family Rauisuchidae, a group of large, predatory archosauriform reptiles that are distant relatives of crocodilians and dinosaurs. Arizonasaurus was a large reptile with some species reaching lengths of up to 4 meters, around 13 feet. Fossils of Arizonasaurus have been found in various locations in the southwestern United States, including Arizona and New Mexico. It had a long and slender body with powerful legs. It was a carnivore, and its skull was equipped with sharp teeth adapted for capturing and consuming prey. This reptile was a top predator in its ecosystem likely preying on other reptiles and early mammals that inhabited the Late Triassic landscapes. Like many other Late Triassic reptiles, Arizonasaurus went extinct at the end of the Triassic period, likely as part of a broader ecological turnover as the early Jurassic saw the rise of different groups of predators and herbivores. Erythrosuchus Erythrosuchus is a genus of archosauriform reptile that belongs to the family Erythrosuchidae. It lived during the Middle Triassic period, approximately 240 to 230 million years ago. Like living crocodiles, they used a semi-erect limb posture, intermediate between the sideways sprawling posture of lizards and the fully erect posture of dinosaurs, birds, and mammals, in which the limbs are held directly under the body. The largest erythrosuchids were up to 5 meters or 16 feet long, with heads almost a meter long. They probably looked like land-living crocodiles, although with longer legs, taller, narrower skulls, and less armor. This creature was likely an ambush predator, although it couldn't match the speed of a tiger during an ambush. It had a slow metabolism typical of early reptiles, and spent most of its day basking in the sun to warm up. Erythrosuchus is known from many specimens, most of which are fragmentary. The holotype, described by Robert Broom, is poorly preserved. Early restorations of the skull of Erythrosuchus depicted it as being tall, similar in appearance to the theropod genus Tyrannosaurus. A complete skull that was described in 1963, though, revealed that its true shape was shorter than previously thought. Its jaw constituted nearly 20% of its total body length, potentially one of the most significant head-to-body ratios among all animals. Erythrosuchus likely possessed a bite force comparable to that of crocodiles, thanks to its massive neck and robust jaws. This adaption would have made it exceptionally proficient at consuming most of a carcass, even making typically inedible parts such as bones, suitable for consumption. Consequently, this reptile could efficiently devour a substantial portion of its prey in a single feeding. Shringosaurus Shringosaurus, meaning horned lizard, is an extinct genus of archosauromorph reptile from the Middle Triassic of India. It is known from the type and only known species Shringosaurus indicus. 
Shringosaurus was a large-bodied quadruped with an estimated body length of 3 to 4 meters, or 9.8 to 13.1 feet. Like some ceratopsid dinosaurs, Shringosaurus had two large horns over its eyes that faced up and forwards from its skull. Shringosaurus also bears convergent physical similarities to sauropodomorph dinosaurs, such as its long neck, its shoulders and forelimbs, and the shape of its teeth. The horns of Shringosaurus are its most prominent feature, and so some focus was placed on their role and function in its initial description. Its describers considered its horns to be likely products of sexual selection, not primarily for defense or species recognition. Postosuchus Postosuchus was one of the largest carnivorous reptiles during the late Triassic. Adults reached around 1.2 meters or 3.9 feet in height, 5 meters, 16 feet in length from snout to tail tip, and their mass might have ranged from 250 to 450 kilograms, 550 to 990 pounds. It had a massively built skull bearing dagger-like teeth. The neck was elongated, expanding to a short torso and long tail. Along with remains of the skeleton, paleontologists also identify osteoderms, which were thick plates forming scales. These were on its back, neck, and possibly above or under the tail. Its crocodile-like ankle joint discouraged fast running. Postosuchus was probably an ambush predator that captured its prey by stealth and surprise, like the modern Komodo dragon of Indonesia. At the end of the Triassic, there was a drastic change in the global climate. Many of the Triassic forests gave rise to more open prairie, with a shift to more dry and arid habitats. The ambush hunting strategy of Postosuchus became less effective in this new environment, where they could not compete with the dinosaurs. They began to decline and soon became extinct at the end of the Triassic, while the dinosaurs proliferated. Atopodentitus An ancient creature with a skull the shape of a vacuum attachment could have been one of the first plant-eating marine reptiles. This sea-dwelling creature, Atopodentitus unicus, thought to have lived around 244 million years ago, had a hammerhead skull with two very different sets of teeth that allowed it to feed on underwater plant matter. Atopodentitus was a medium-sized reptile, measuring about 2.75 meters or 9 feet long, and had a drooping snout with a vertical, zipper-like arrangement of teeth. The toes on the feet probably covered with some sort of webbing or skin to help it paddle better through the water. Atopodentitus does not seem to have adaptions for going back up onto land. It seems very highly adapted for aquatic life, and probably also gave birth to live young, though there is not much evidence. It is uncertain if it lived in groups, and it might have been a solitary grazer, rather than a family-oriented animal. The Sauroterygians are a group of fairly mysterious creatures that include most of the famous marine reptiles that appeared in the Triassic. They may or may not have been closely related to turtles. As such, Atopodentitus would have been a fantastic early cousin of later weirdos like Plesiosaurus and Leopleurodon, though they wouldn't stick with the shovel filter feeding mouth idea that Atopodentitus tried out. Tanistrophius Tanistrophius is a fascinating reptile known primarily from the Triassic period. The genus Tanistrophius was most renowned for its unusually long neck, which was made up of extremely elongated vertebrae. These neck vertebrae could make up over half of the animal's total length, which is an exceptional characteristic among vertebrates. The body was short, with a small head and large, robust jaws. It also had long, slender teeth, which suggests that it might have been a specialist fish-eater. The tail was also long, which may have aided in swimming. Its total body length is estimated to range from 1.5 to 6 meters, 4.9 to 19.6 feet, depending on the species. Fossils of Tanistrophius have been found in Europe, 
the Middle East, China, and North America, suggesting that this genus had a wide geographic distribution. Despite the apparent vulnerability of its long neck to predation, Tanistrovius was evolutionarily successful, surviving for at least 10 million years. Its long neck was a distinguishing adaption, allowing it to potentially ambush prey, although it also provided a clear target for predators. Lysoecia, a humongous lizard mammal that lived alongside the dinosaurs over 200 million years ago, has been discovered in Poland. The herbivorous creature, named Lysoecia bojani, was about 40% bigger than any other species of its kind, measuring 4.5 meters, 14.7 feet in length, 2.6 meters in height, and weighing approximately 9 tons. This is roughly equivalent to the size of an elephant. Lysoecia is a Dicynodonts, a group of animals belonging to the Therapsid order. Therapsids were mammal-like reptiles that lived alongside the first mammals, crocodiles and dinosaurs. They became a dominant species during the Middle and Late Triassic period. Lysoecia had an entirely upright stance, with all four limbs being fully erect, holding them directly under its body and swinging them forwards and backwards when moving, like the legs of modern large mammals and dinosaurs. Lysoecia was a herbivore, browsing on low and mid-level vegetation, using its long snout and toothless beak to crop and chew plants. Lysoecia was also unique for how it grew. While some stem mammals are known to have grown rapidly as young juveniles, Lysoecia is the only one known so far to never slow down its growth rate at all until adulthood. Platiosaurus Platiosaurus, probably meaning broad lizard, often mistranslated as flat lizard, is a genus of platiosaurid dinosaur that lived during the late Triassic period, around 214 to 204 million years ago, in what is now central and northern Europe. Discovered in 1834 by Johann Friedrich Engelhardt and described three years later by Hermann von Meer, Platiosaurus was the fifth named dinosaur genus that is still considered valid. Platiosaurus was a bipedal herbivore with a small skull on a long, flexible neck, sharp but plump plant-crushing teeth, powerful hind limbs, short but muscular arms, and grasping hands with large claws on three fingers, possibly used for defense and feeding. Unusually for a dinosaur, Platiosaurus showed strong developmental plasticity. Instead of having a fairly uniform adult size, Fully grown individuals were between 4.8 and 10 meters, 16 and 33 feet long, and weighed between 600 and 4,000 kilograms, 1,300 and 8,800 pounds. Commonly, the animal lived for at least 12 to 20 years, but the maximum lifespan is not known. Similar to all non-avian dinosaurs studied to date, Platiosaurus grew in a pattern that is unlike that of both extant mammals and birds. In the closely related sauropods, with their typical dinosaur physiology, growth was initially rapid, continuing somewhat more slowly well beyond sexual maturity, but was determinate. For example, the animal stopped growing at a maximum size. Ichthyosaurs Ichthyosaurs are a group of dolphin-shaped marine reptiles that played an important role as apex predators in Mesozoic ocean ecosystems. Ichthyosaur species varied from 1 to 20 meters, 3 to 66 feet, in length. Their limbs had been fully transformed into flippers, which sometimes contained a very large number of digits or phalanges. The origins of the ichthyosaurs start in the aftermath of the worst ever mass extinction at the end of the Permian period over 250 million years ago. The marine reptiles first began to appear in the fossil record around 240 million years ago, and likely descended from land-dwelling ancestors which returned to the ocean. They grew large relatively rapidly, with some reaching the size of whales within a few million years. Some hypotheses suggest that because most giant ichthyosaur fossils are found without teeth, the animals may have sucked in prey, such as cephalopods, rather than grasping them. Those with teeth 
may have behaved more like modern sperm whales, being able to eat squid, but also vertebrates such as fish and other ichthyosaurs. Similar to modern cetaceans, such as whales and dolphins, ichthyosaurs were air-breathing. Of ichthyosaurs, it was traditionally assumed that they were cold-blooded, being reptiles. However, since the 1970s, many dormant reptile groups of the Mesozoic, such as theropod dinosaurs, pterosaurs, and plesiosaurs, have been considered warm-blooded, as this offers an elegant explanation of their dominance. Some direct evidence is available that ichthyosaurs, too, might have been endothermic. But while ichthyosaurs in general managed to survive until 95 million years ago, the giant ichthyosaurs mysteriously vanished as the Triassic came to an end around 200 million years ago.